Welcome to the World Series of Fighting 9 conference call. I will now turn the call over to John Bayrudi. Uh, thank you very much, operator. On behalf of the World Series of Fighting and everyone involved with our big fight card March 29th at the Hard Rock in Las Vegas, I'd like to thank you and welcome you to today's card, the Saturday, March 29th fight card, maybe the very best ever with the WSOF. There are two world title fights. Uh, a five-bout uh, card will be uh, aired live on NBC Sports Network at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, at 3.30, uh, there will be preliminary bouts. They'll be streamed live uh, on the World Series of Fighting's official website, WSOF.com. Uh, tickets are available uh, starting at... I think $39. Uh, the first fight on March 29th will be at 2.30 p.m. I'm sorry, the doors open at 2.30 p.m. with the first fight at 3.30. Uh, on today's call, we have six or five of the ten fighters that will be appearing on the NBC Sports Network portion of the card, including the four fighters that will be fighting in the two world title fights. Uh before we get to them, though, uh, Operator, will you give instructions on how to ask questions for the media? If you would like to ask a question on this call, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad, star 1 on your telephone keypad. Okay, and before we get to the uh, Q&A with the fighters, I'd like to introduce, to make some opening comments, the president of the WSOF, Ray Suffo and the Senior Executive Vice President of the WSOF, Ali Abdaali. Ali, I butchered your name again, sorry. Uh, anyway, we'll okay. start with Ray with some opening comments, talk about the card, and then we'll go to Ali for some opening comments, and then we'll get to the fighters. Ray? Uh, yes. Um, thank you, John. Uh, I'm pretty much, I'm sure you pretty much covered it, but uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, the media for giving us call. Uh, it's an amazing card. I think it's the best card that uh, we've put together uh, so far. Um, again, there's two world titles uh, on the line, and I mean the the, the, the two guys, or should I say, the four guys that we competed for that fight. Those fighters are uh, two amazing fighters. Uh, they're proving themselves time and time again. So I'm super excited about uh, the fights, and of course, uh, you know, uh, Josh Goodman's back in there again, James Tyler Simpson. So uh, that's a you know that's a fight that I don't think will go to distance. I'm pretty sure that those three fights that I just mentioned, I don't think any of those fights are going to go to distance. They're all exciting guys. Um, they're well matched together, and uh, I've done another amazing job. So again, thank you to the media and all the fighters that are on this call. Okay, thank you, Ali. Can we get some opening comments from you, please? Uh, Ray, uh, hello everybody. I just want to thank all the fighters on the call and. Uh, all this amazing media always supporting us. And, uh, uh, you know, Ray said everything very much. Uh, I want to say uh, that's probably the best words uh, fighting card we put together. Uh, I believe uh, this is the best fight card of the month uh, possible of the year. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen every fight. Um, I, I don't see too many fights going to defend on this card, uh, especially the main card. I wouldn't know what to expect from the main event. Uh, you know, uh, with Mark Paharis and uh, Steve Carl and Marlin and Rockin' House. Uh, what other things I want to tell the media? Um, from Monday uh, to Saturday next week, uh, it's going to be some announcement made. Uh, probably it's going to change the, the demographic of MMA. Uh, it's going to be some big news we're going to release from Monday to Saturday. Um, it's going to change uh, how the fans are going to view the sport. Uh, uh, how the fighters uh, about the going to change the fighters it's going to change so much stuff in MMA and it's going to very separate us you know uh, as you know everybody know the UFC is number one and we are competing with ourselves every day to be number one uh, but it's going to be separation be between the UFC and us and it's going to be everybody else the way um, we're going to get looked at but uh, you know uh, I'm done and I'm thankful for all the media uh, here today and all the fighters and you guys can go ahead and ask questions. Okay, thanks, Ali. 
Uh, on the car, on the call with us today, we've got uh, welterweight uh, champion Steve Carr, Carl, who will be defending against Usamar Paul Harris, and we've got uh, one of the very best 135 pounders in the world, Marlon Marias, fighting uh, Josh Rittenhouse. They're both on the call, and we've got Tyler Stinson on the call, who will be fighting Josh Berkman. Uh, we're hoping Josh gets on this call momentarily. So if you have any questions for those guys or Ray or Ali, uh, please punch in and you can ask your question immediately. And while we wait for this question, I'll get some opening comments uh, from Steve and Husamar. Just uh, what your thoughts are going into this site. Steve, welcome to the call. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Can you hear me? Yep, you're fine. Uh, sorry, I was on mute. <clears throat> um, this is going to be a really exciting fight. Uh, now we're the World Series. Uh, this is an amazingly stacked card, and not even as a competitor, but as a fan, I'm, I'm ready just to watch this and compete. Um, I can't wait for next weekend. It's going to be a blast. Okay, uh, great. Uh, who's from Mark? Can we get some opening comments on you and on your thoughts on the fight? For the Mario, it's a great opportunity, and he will make a show on Saturday. Okay, thank you. Uh, second world title fight on the card uh, is Marlon and Josh Redenhouse. Marlon, can we get some opening comments from you, please? I I want. I want to thank you, Ray, Ali, Abdelaziz, everybody from the World Series, uh, and wish all the fighters uh, safe end of camp, you know. And, and just say that next week, uh, March 29, I'll give everything I have to, to make this show the best show that we ever have. And I'm ready, and I'm, I'm going to get the belt. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, can we get some opening comments now from Josh? Josh, what are your thoughts on fighting Marlon for the WSOF's inaugural Bantamweight Championship? I'm excited, man. I'm uh, I'm ready to go, too, and uh, just, just here to make sure I get that title instead of Marlon. Okay, thank you. And before we go to the questions, uh, Tyler, can we get some opening comments from you, please? Yeah, save the best for last. Uh, I'm just real excited to get out there, man, and get back in there. You know, I fought on Jan in January and uh, showed Ray and Ali, you know, that I'm I'm capable of, of fighting, you know, world class world class fighters. And and Berkman is just that. Uh, he's not on a conference call right now. I don't know if he's too Hollywood or if he's even just scared to talk to me. But uh, you know, I'm gonna go out there and do what I do and and knock his lights out. All right. Uh, great. Thank you. Uh, Josh Berkman just got on the call. Josh, welcome to the call. Can we get some opening comments? Uh, uh, you please? Yeah. First off, thanks for having me. Um, better late than never, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, just um, we're obviously on the call for World Series of Fighting Nine. I'm fighting Tyler Stinson. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to our fight and uh, the other fights are on the card. I'm really excited about this show and uh, the fights are on. Okay, uh, thank you all. Operator, do you have any questions in queue for uh, either Ray, Ali, or the six fighters? Our first question comes from Brian Oswald with BleacherReport.com. Your line is live. Brian, you're not alive. Hi, I was calling you. Uh, thanks, guys, for being on the call and taking our questions. Ali, uh, my first question mm -hmm. is for you. Uh, when you were talking about the announcements you guys are going to make next week, did you say that you guys would be doing, like, partnering with the UFC to help make you guys the number two organization, or did you just say that you guys will be doing something on your own uh, to help make you number two? No, we we are we we on our own. We have no relationship with the UFC. Uh, but what what I said, we are going to make an announcement. It will probably change the demographic of MMA, and uh, it, it will change a lot of things uh, in MMA. That's what I said. 
Very cool. I, I don't suppose you can give us any hints, right? <laughs> I know you guys are going to be there, and uh, one of the things that you guys have been there for since day one, and uh, you're always going to get credential, but some of the media that are not there, they, they're going to ask for credential, and they might be running out. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, Steve, Carl, I had a question for you. Um, you're fighting a very uh, kind of controversial character in Rusimal Paharis, obviously a great fighter. Um, what are your thoughts on him getting a second chance at World Series of fighting? Are you excited to fight him? Did you think he deserved another shot after he got cut by the UFC? Um, well, he's an amazingly talented fighter, first off. I mean, he sure. definitely deserves to uh, keep fighting. I don't know if uh, giving him a title shot right away was uh, you know, really deserving. But at the same time, all that controversy that does surround him puts him in a perfect spot to be in a title shot because there's going to be so many people tuning into this fight. Whereas if he was uh, uh, just fighting a regular fight on the main card, it wouldn't be that big of a buzz. But now that he's back in it for a title shot, uh, you know, the whole world's watching. Very good. And um, is, is Ray on the line or just Ali? Not here. Hey, Ray. Um, uh, this is this is either for you or Ali. Um, a lot of people are talking about uh, Nick Newell, deservedly so. He's one of the most exciting fighters in the sport right now, no matter what organization you're talking about. Um, are are you guys thinking about doing a title shot for him with with Justin, or what's what's the story with the light lightweight division division the title picture? Well, you know, <laughs> Nick is uh, you know he's made a lot of noise about fighting for the title, and I think he does deserve to fight for that title. Uh, Ali and I have talked about it. Uh, there's no 100% confirmation on uh, when that would happen. But uh, without a doubt, Nick New is definitely uh, in line for that title shot. And so, um, listen, the guy, the kid has proven his time, uh, himself time and time again. He's an amazing fighter. Uh, yeah. He's an inspiration, without a doubt. I mean, you know, I, I can't say whether I, could, whether, whether I would do what uh, he does. If uh, if I was you know about half an hour and all, so uh, that being said, the guy's amazing. I mean, he's he's truly an inspiration, and um, and again, he's proven himself time and time again. And I think it's uh, it, it's time for him to get you know to step up and 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 give him that opportunity to fight for the title. So you, you so he is in line for the title, but nothing's official one hundred percent yet. Correct. Correct. Okay. Cool. All right, thanks, guys. I'll let someone else jump in with a question. Thank you. Our next question comes from Sean Ashadi with MMM Fighting. Your line is live. Hi, guys. I appreciate the time. Uh, my first question is for Um can you, can you, you know, kind of describe what the experiences of the past five months have been like for you? I mean, switching organizations and really just coming under all this scrutiny. Thank you. Just, okay, for Rosemar Palhaz, this is a, a great opportunity to fight in WSOF, you know. You know you have many experience in another organization, but now you are focused in WSOF and get this title shot, get this, this belt. Uh, okay. Um, I mean, how did you do that, you know, because obviously after that happened, Got to, that you being back to fight week fighting for the title, it's got to be some level of normal, normal, uh, normalcy, right? Yeah. Your your colleague's a little bit terrible. I have some noise. You can repeat the question. Okay, I'll just move on. Uh, was there ever a time then, who's more, where you worried that, you know, this couldn't be a possible outcome and that you wouldn't be able to, you know, return back to fighting on a relatively big stage? Oh. Let me move this one here because I can't understand the first question. Can you repeat? Sorry, the code is not so good. Sorry. All right, I'll, uh, I'll hang up and I'll call back. Our next question is from Heidi Fang with MMM Fight Corner. Your line is live. Okay, hello. Uh, my first question is for Ray or Ali, whoever would prefer to answer it. I just received this press release about Shout TV, and the, it allows the fans to participate and possibly win a Ducati. 
I was wondering if you can tell us uh, how this partnership came about and how the fans can participate in it. Ray, you want to go ahead? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, hi, hi. Um, obviously, you know, with, uh, I'll see which out um, uh, to Sean and they, they came in to talk and um, great, 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 great people to uh, work with and, and partner up with. Um, and uh, what it is is that, you know, you can, you can uh, watch it and vote online and, and uh, or on uh, from TV and what I've been is doing. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the reward is amazing. You get to win the Ducati uh, bike, which is, uh, uh, um, if, I was at, if I was able to uh, be in that competition, I'd be, I'd be voting too. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a great partnership and, and the, the great people to work with. And it um, uh, all came to, uh, you know, our team reaching out, uh, being in a sponsorship and what have you, and uh, they came on board. And so we're very happy and proud to have them on board. Great. Thank you. And Ali, do you have any comments to add to that? Our next question comes from Hunter Homestack with Bleacher Report. Your line is live. Hey, guys. Uh, my question is for Ray. Ray, you got Paul Harris fighting for the title, and obviously he carries, he carries a lot of baggage with him. I'm sure you guys have thought about what if, what if he beats Carl by a heel hook and holds on to it too long? Have you thought about what would happen in that case? Would he be disqualified? Would Carl retain the title? How would you guys move forward from there? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, well, first and foremost, uh, let's hope that doesn't happen. And uh, of all, you know, Baharas is uh, uh, a great fighter. He's proven that time and time again. Um, a lot of people don't know. And, you know, uh, really, when you think about his history, uh, he is known in the sport as the, uh, the dirty fighter. But um, when you look at his history, he hasn't he hasn't criminally hurt anybody in the, in, in the cage. And then outside of the cage. Um, you know, obviously, I've uh, talked to a few people that know him really well, and um, the guy is, you know, he's a family man, he's, uh, he's a fisherman at home. I mean, the guy came up with nothing, you know, came up with nothing, and like a lot of us did. And so, uh, having this opportunity and understanding, like, you know, going back to what we, um, uh, at, at first, I wasn't that interested. And Ali and I talked about it, and then when, uh, you know, uh, Master Hensa Gracie, uh, who's a master at Jiu-Jitsu, uh, did an interview and talked about the hill hooks and how long and how tight you can hold on to that. I mean, if you look at the, the, the way the guy was trained, that's how he's trained because um, his trainer trained him exactly the same way because also his trainer fought in the UFC. And um, I can't remember his trainer's name now, but uh, he, uh, he went for a submission Held on to it. The guy tapped. He let it go. And uh, the guy said he didn't tap. So he had to submit this guy again. And again, if you go back to history again, even further, uh, you look at Boyce uh, Gracie and I think it was Ken Shenrock, where Boyce submitted uh, Ken. And Ken said he wasn't submitted. Uh, wasn't submitted. And so Boyce had to submit him again. You know what I mean? So it's just one of these technical things that um, that. Only someone like Kenzo or someone like Usamara or anyone that understands the, the submission game. Listen, I, I, I do jiu-jitsu, but my jiu-jitsu is nothing compared to Ali, for example, and to Gracie, for example. You know, all the big names and that. that and even uh, Steve Carl. Steve Carl is an amazing uh, round guy. To, you know, he's amazing jiu-jitsu just in that as well. So, um, that being said, but, you know, uh, we haven't really thought about uh, that scenario, uh, that's, and uh, so we have talked to, uh, Lucimar and his team, and he understands where, you know, this opportunity, uh, if we, uh, if the opportunity doesn't, uh, I mean, if he misses up again, opportunity might not be there. That being said, the guy's an amazing fighter. He's, uh, um, he's a, he's a family man, and, uh, listen to everybody. We're, we're in the, the, we're in Nevada. It's called the Second Chance State. And so, uh, that being said, he's fighting here for the title. And um, I, I think he, he uh, deserves that opportunity. Uh, Steve Carr is an amazing fighter, and I think a lot of people um, are underestimating Steve Carr. But Steve Carr, without a doubt, he's going to come to throw down. 
he hasn't lost. Uh, I mean, he's on a seven eight winning streak. So uh, he's always on a high. And sometimes when you get the step around your waist, uh, make sure you're even a better fighter. So uh, I'm excited and really looking forward to this uh, tournament. Excellent. And then beyond that, do you know who's next after this fight? Is it John Fitch? Is it the winner of Berkman and Stinson? Do you know who will be next for the welterweight strap? We're not making fights right now. We're just uh, focusing on what WSF 9. This is, you know, this is, you know, we have two title fights, and uh, and this is what we, we're doing right now. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Just a reminder, if anyone would like to ask a question, please hit star 1 on your telephone keypad, star 1, and I'll access your line. We do have a question from Heidi Fang from MMA Fight Corner. Your line is live. Yes, sorry. Thank you for the time. I think my line had dropped out. Uh, I wanted to ask Josh Berkman uh, about the opportunity to get back in there and hoping to rebound from his uh, loss to Steve Carl. What's up, Heidi? Hey, Josh. How are you? Um, I'm good. You know, I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm excited to get back in there. And, you know, they, it's like, uh, I had, my, my life was tough. And, you know, it made me look at some things that I was doing. You know, I didn't have a great performance. And so it made me just go back. I look at a lot of things that I was doing, including fight week. And I believe that I've fixed a lot of those things. And I think that, you know, I was really, um, comfortable going into the fight with Steve Carl. And I think that the biggest problem that I had with my winning streak is that it made me a little complacent in where I was and what I was doing. And I think that, you know, when when you lose, it, it creates that frustration and that adversity to make you question things and to get better. And I think that that's all that fight did, is it's made me, um, you know, better in my training, a little more disciplined, and I think that it'll make for, you know, the best performances in my career coming forward, starting with this fight on March 29th. Thank you. And uh, for Marlon, you're on a six-fight win streak with four of those fights taking place inside the World Series of Fighting Decagon. Uh, what does this opportunity mean for you to fight Josh Reddinghouse? I'm happy with the opportunity, you know. I respect everybody. Uh, they gave him the chance now, and now it's time, you know, just time to go there and do do the best, you know, go out there and show what I've been proving, what I've been working, and I can't wait. And for Josh, how do you feel about fighting Marlon? I mean, you've just had your World Series of Fighting debut, a fight that you won, and I was curious what you see in Marlon and what you think your advantages may be. Uh, yeah, Marlon's a great fighter. Um, I'm a big fan of his. Uh, I honestly didn't expect the opportunity, but of course I'm going to jump all over it. Um, as far as strengths, you know, he's pretty well-rounded. I think we match up well, so I think it's going to be really exciting. Um, you'll just have to tune in, though. Great. Thank you for the time. Our next question comes from Stephen Morocco with... Question, please. All right. So, does, does he still feel the same way about the stoppage of his most recent fight against Mike Pierce? Does he does he still think it was the referee who got in the way and Pierce that didn't tap hard enough? So, what he's saying, still, the decisions are still that it was the referee. Who, like, I, hey, I held I held the submission too long because the referee, you know, didn't come in quick enough or the problem is that happened in the last few years. The problem happened last year. The last fight. Is he saying he's still basically blaming Pierce for not having hard enough, and the rest of it didn't get there quick enough? That's what he's saying. Is he blaming them? Yes, just know about this problem. They happened last. So this problem is not happening again. It's a mistake, and I know I work. I work. I work about that, and it's my fault. But it's not never happen again. You know. So this is the point. So, so he he does he has taken some responsibility for for what happened. Not have more this 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 is not it never will happen again. This is the point. Okay. 
Um, and then um, uh, I have a question for for Yushin. Is is Yushin on the call? Uh, no, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's flying right now. He's what? He's in the air. He's. Oh, okay, got it. I'm sorry. He was on the he was on the, the announcement. I'll, I'll get back in queue. Thank you. Our next question comes from Stephen Juwan with Wrestling and Wrestling Observer. Your line is live. Thank you, operator. Uh, my question is for Steve Carl. We've heard a lot about the vaunted leg locks of who Smart Paul is and the controversy of them already. So, quite simply, just bottom line it. What is your plan, knowing that he's probably immediately going through your leg in the fight? Um, well, quite simply put, uh, if he wants to turn into a leg loss more, my goal is to keep it a fight, and that's about it. All right, so you're not you worry you think your standing strikes will keep him from ever getting to the leg? Oh no, I didn't say that. Uh, but wherever this fight goes, he has the ability to roll the leg lock from wherever, and I need to. Stay aware of where my legs are in comparison to his body, and I need to keep it just a fight. And instead of getting myself deep into a leg lock where I'm no longer able to fight, and instead I'm just trying to defend myself. All right. Well, very good. Thank you for the answer, and uh, let the next person get on the line. Thanks. Our next question comes from Sean Ashadi with MMMFighting.com. Your line is live. All right. I'll try this again, guys. Uh, so my question is for Hootsamar. Um, my question really was over the past five months, you know, obviously it was a difficult five months. Was there ever a time when you, you really worried that this wouldn't be a potential outcome that you could still, you know, be fighting for a major organization? Thank you. know, after the, after the ban, the UFC banned him, was he ever concerned, hey, maybe I'll never fight for a major organization again? Yeah. So uh, now because of this, the might is so so great to to that last effort, this opportunity. And this time when he went off the UFC, it's, it's not good it's good time for him. But uh, now you know that we have this great opportunity, and you focus on this. The path is the path. Now it's important to execute. Okay. Um, I guess my question then is for Steve Carl. Um, you know, given given his, his smart history and uh, it's kind of being a reoccurring incident, did, did, did that give you concern? Did that give you pause when you first offered this fight? Uh, you know, it gave me more concern uh, before being offered the fight. Uh, when he first signed with the organization, and uh, you know that I think that rattled everybody in the welterweight division a little bit. And John Fitch came out and said, "I don't want to fight him." Uh, it'd be very easy for me to say the same thing, but once I had that belt around my waist, you know, I wanted to come off as a champion that would fight anybody. So, uh, given the opportunity to fight him, I took it immediately. And and when when faced with thinking about uh, being in that position and him not letting go, uh, my stance really is I don't care because if I'm in that position, I've already lost the fight. And I'm not thinking about that. So there was some initial hesitation, you say, with right when he first signed? Uh, yeah, the, the initial uh, hesitation, the uh, initial worries was when he first signed. But once I became champion, uh, my attitude changed. And I'm going to fight anybody to prove that I am the best in World Series of fighting. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Our next question comes from Brad Gustafson from Fight Parrot. Your line is live. Yes, this question is for Ray. Uh, Ray, I wanted to ask you, is there any update on the Japanese debut? What's going on with that? Uh, yes, um, that's, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at August 2nd, that event. Um, and uh, as we move forward, obviously that's still a way, ways away. And uh, But, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's when we're looking to do that. Any idea who you'll have headlining that card? I know you're not making fights right now, but do you still plan on having Okami be on that card? Uh, most definitely, Okami will headline that card. Okay. Also, also wanted to ask um, the status on Paul Harris. Is he in Las Vegas right now? Uh, yes, he is. In fact, he's in my office right now. Okay, and can you kind of give us an idea about when he gets uh, the testing with the NSAC and when we can expect the results? 
I believe that's uh, uh, take five five days. Uh, so you know, uh, it'll be sometime early next week, I believe. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have a lot of media on this call. This is going to serve as like a two-minute warning. Uh, if you want to ask any questions to Ray or Ali or the six fighters on this call, please punch in now. Operator, will you give the instructions one more time, please? If you'd like to ask a question, please hit star 1 on your telephone keypad, star 1 on your telephone keypad. And we have a question from Brian Oswald with BleacherReport.com. Your line is live. Brian, your line is live. Thank you. My question was kind of along the lines of the last one with the, the drug testing. That kind of, I guess, came out of the blue or a bit unexpected, at least on our end. Uh, is there any concern over the drug testing? Um, I guess, have you have you talked with Rusamar and gotten everything kind of straightened out? Let me let me get this question for you. Uh, what happened is, uh, we, you know, it was we got the request from the Nevada Athletic Commission, and it was kind of it was kind of late. Uh, it was only about like three weeks before the fight, and uh, and with with no recommendation where to go in Brazil, and we couldn't. Uh, so Mark and now find a place in Brazil. Uh, you know, uh, we decide to bring him here and get the test, and we'll get the result the only day before the fight. Um, we wish we have a more notice. But uh, I'm, you know, I'm not worried about Usmar not being clean. Uh, he, he was clean for his last fight. Uh, I'm very sure he's a clean fighter. But in Shove, uh, if anything bad happened, you know, I have a backup um, uh, for that, for Steve Caro. Steve Caro will fight regardless. Thank you. And then on, on a, a more positive note, I guess, or just talking about the fight itself uh, with Marlon, he's ranked, you know, by most people as a top 10 bantamweight in, in MMA. Um, you know, Sheridan has him ranked number nine or number 10. So he's a very exciting fighter. Um, can you talk more about Marlon and, uh, you know, how excited you are to have him fighting on this card? Yes. Uh, listen, I, I, you know, um, I, I know Marlon even before he fought, fought for World Series of Fighting. Uh, I believe Marlon is the best 135 in the world. I, uh, I, I believe he can beat anybody in any other organization. Uh, the, the kid is very young. He's grown. Uh, he's so talented. He, he can wrestle. He's got a good ground game. He's one of the best strikers in the sport, I believe. Um, and the sky limit uh, for him. On the other, on the other hand, uh, Josh Rothenhaus, uh, he fought an Olympic bronze uh, Olympic bronze medalist, and he out wrestled him. And uh, and I, I believe this fight is so competitive, and a lot of people overlooking Josh. I think Marlon is one of the best. I think he's the best in the world. And um, Josh have an opportunity out there and prove everyone wrong. Um, and I think this fight uh, is going to be the best fight of the night. Thanks, guys. Welcome. Thank you. Our next question comes from John Navarro with Knockout TV. Your line is live. John, your line is live. Sorry, I had to unmute my phone. Uh, my first question is for Marlon. So, Marlon, I yep. just want to ask, how's the transition? What's it been like for you going from Muay Thai to full cage fighting? It was hard, you know. In the beginning, I had hard times. Uh, to find myself inside the cage because it's a different sport, you know. But as I as I moved to United States, I started to train with a lot of guys and different styles of fighters, wrestlers, jiu-jitsu guys. And now I, I'm training with Frankie Edgar here in New Jersey and Mark Henry and Ricardo Almeida. They're showing me, you know, uh, the way that, that you can use inside an MMA fight. And, man, I'm feeling really good, you know. I'm training hard. I'm improving every day. And, man, this is, this is what it is, you know. And March 29th, uh, I'll give my best, and Josh will give his best. And I can tell you guys, it's going to be a great fight. Hey, thanks. My My next question is for Ray. I know your primary location is Vegas, but do you plan on having any shows here in California? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, um, June is actually where out in California. Pardon me? San Jose, California. San Jose. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, in June, we're in uh, San Jose, California. Okay. And uh, Ray, I'd really like to talk to you off this line. I know I gave my email address to the lady on the line. Please have uh, you or Ali contact me after the call, if you could. Thank you. Sure. No, no, no problem. I'm good. Are we... we have a question from Sean Alshadi from MMAfighting.com. Your line is live. Hi, I uh, just wanted to briefly revisit something Holly said. Uh, you were talking about the Usama getting drug tested, and you said if something if something goes poorly, you have a, you have a backup plan. So I was just curious, what, what would that backup plan be? Uh, yeah, listen, I'm you know I appreciate your question. I'm I'm trying to stay on on this call, but you know what I just said in the interview, uh, I said I wish the Nevada Athletic Commission give me more time uh, because normally when you have a main event and one fight fell off, you, you know. Uh, like, luckily, I have other four welterweight uh, competitors. Uh, they're gonna fight, and if, if anything happens uh, with Gusmar test, I'm sure he's gonna come clean. I'm, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure he's gonna come clean. We do have a second and third this main event, and I'm gonna have somebody else will fight. Yes, I mean that seems bizarre to me that they would do such a last-second test. I mean, would that surprising to you? To be honest with you, I I I, um, I support they they test 100 percent. I think all fighters should be tested, but please give me a hit up uh, or a notice, especially when you know the fighters in Brazil, uh, or at least recommend somebody in Brazil for me to go to. And uh, yeah. you know, Busmar was was kind enough to, to get on the plane and and to break his camp and finish his camp here. And I know this is going to be difficult and stressful for him too. Uh, but you know. I'm going to roll the punches. We have an amazing card on Saturday. I'm trying to focus on it. And, and me and Ray and the whole team, and, and we're going to have some big announcements. And I'm not going to let this affect us. And it's just going to be the biggest, this is going to be the biggest week of World Series of Fighting uh, since we started. And, and, and it's going to be great. All right. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. You got it. Our last question comes from Hunter Homosek with Bleacher Report. Your line is live. Hey, my question's for Steve Carl. Steve, all this said, if they have a backup, if if the worst case scenario happens and they have to switch out your opponent at the last second, are you ready for that task? And do you know who the backup is? Are you able to prepare for that on such short notice? Uh, well, on short notice, you can't really prepare for anything. You just have to be ready for anything, and that's what I am. Um, if it comes down to where Paul Harris can't fight. Um, and Ali has a backup plan for me, then it looks like I'm going to fight the backup plan, no questions asked. I, I, listen, I'm, I'm trying to upload, I'm try, let me add one thing, just to let you guys know, everybody. When I when I call Steve Carl to fight with Small Paharas, uh, Steve Carl did not hesitate uh, one bit. And, and I don't want to mention any other names. Some other, some other people hesitated. Steve Carl is a true champion. He will fight anybody. And uh, this is kind of guy I love to have fight for us. You know, he's a gentleman and the guy did not hesitate not one bit and he said, I'll fight anybody just put him in front of me. Uh, and, and listen, a lot of people overlook Steve Carl. Steve Carl is not the same guy fought three years ago. Steve Carl is a complete uh, mixed martial artist and he finished fights. And if you fight Steve Carl, you'll be ready to be finished. Uh, and this is what he does. He's been finishing guys and right for the last, I don't know how many fights. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, before we go to closing comments, I'd like to thank uh, all the media for participating on this call and definitely the fighters along with Ray and Ali. Just uh, a little housekeeping one more time. This terrific uh, World Series of Fighting 9 event will be taking place a week from Saturday, March 29th at the Hard Rock in Las Vegas. Uh, tickets Started at $39. They're on sale now at Ticketmaster. It can also be purchased at the joint box office or by phone, uh, 800-745-3000. Uh, the top five fights, including the two world title fights, will be aired on NBC Sports Network at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific. Uh, a terrific uh Preliminary card will begin at uh, 
3.30 on WSOS.com. We hope if you can't be there in person that you'll tune in. Uh, again, thanks to everyone. We're going to uh, now go to some closing comments. I think we'll start uh, with uh, Tyler and Josh Burton. So, uh, Tyler, can we get some closing comments in, from you? And yeah, Absolutely. Uh, uh, for all the media guys out there, um, do your homework a little more, and you see that I'm the backup plan uh, because social media, nothing lies on social media. So you talk Twitter and everything. I'm the backup plan. If that doesn't work, then the backup plan gets back Josh Burton still. So either way, I get to beat somebody up on national TV. So I'm happy. Great, Tyler. Good luck to you. Uh, Josh? Uh, I just want to say, you know, thanks to the World Series of Fighting uh, for putting on another awesome show. I'm looking forward to you know, just getting back in there and, you know, showing off what I've been working on for the last couple of months. So don't forget to tune in on uh, March 29th, World Series Friday 9. Appreciate it. Can we get some closing comments from Marlon, please? Thank you, Omidia, to be here. Thank you, World Series of Fighting, for one more opportunity, and see you guys next week. Uh, thank you. Uh, Josh, can we get some closing comments from you? Josh, ready us? Yeah, I just want to say uh, thanks for having me. Thanks uh, the World Series of Fighting for the opportunity. Um, you know, I know a lot of guys are looking past me, but I can guarantee a good fight, and uh, I'm going to bring it, so don't miss it. Fantastic. Thanks. And uh, to the uh, main event, can we get the closing comment from Husamar, please? Yeah, thanks so much for the opportunity for everybody. And want to say in this moment, I change all the my mindset. I have new fighters, and I'm prepared for this fighting, and I will, I will be a great show for everybody. Okay, thank you, and uh, we'll wrap up the fighters portion of this call with uh, defending WSOF welterweight champ Steve Carl. Steve, can we get some closing talks, please? Um, I'm just super excited for this card, uh, and I'm I'm really honored to be the main event for the biggest WSOF card to date, and I just cannot wait for next weekend. Make sure everybody tunes in. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ali, do you have any closing comments, please? Yes. Uh, I just want to thank everybody, and especially the media, uh, always behind us 100%. Uh, and as everybody knows, we have a press conference on Thursday, and we're going to do a lot of announcements there, uh, if you can be there late. Uh, first, I didn't see... I didn't see anybody ask a Tyler Stinson question. Uh, Tyler Stinson, you know, uh, you got to watch this guy when he fights by force, the guy bring it. And, and I think him and Josh Berkman, this is two true warriors. They're going to go in the cage on, on Saturday night, this Saturday, and they're going to really push each other to the limit. And uh, I'm really shocked they needed to ask the question, but don't sleep on this guy. Secondly, um, if you really, really love MMA and you like finishes, you like to finish the fight, tune in on March 29 at NBC Sport Network, and you're going to see a lot of finishes and a lot of exciting. Every fighter on this card is exciting, and if you look at all their records, they don't do guys that do not go to decision much. They finish fight, and I guarantee you, on this main card, 75% finish rate, it will deliver. Um, me and my Ray uh, put this card on for, for the fan and for the media to enjoy. And I hope uh, come Saturday night, March 29, you guys will talk about it uh, for one month after this event. Thank you for everybody. Thanks, Ali. Uh, Ray, do you want to wrap things up for us, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just before we go, uh, I just want to touch also on uh, anybody that knows what uh, Otani brings to the table. Uh, he's an amazing fighter. He's an accomplished and rich martial artist. I know many people know too much about uh, Rick Lazar. Uh, Rick Lazar is, uh, he comes from a wrestling, he's been wrestling since he was a kid, comes from a ground, uh, wrestling background, uh, grappling and kickboxing. So, uh, he's won eight of his five, his record is 12 and four, and eight of those were submissions, and three of those were KOs. And so, this will give you guys some sort of background on him. Uh, but like all he said, you know, uh, when, when you look at this card, it's an amazing card, it's probably the it is the best uh of any part of the day. And um Steve Paul and I and 
Um, how is that? It, it, you know, it has a made a name. It can be an amazing show. Martin Marais, Gus, uh, Rennie House, you know, shocked me when my team was when he fought in Miami. Um, I never, I never seen, uh, haven't seen Josh fight. I mean, I seen a little bit of Josh, but when I saw him fight against uh, Vila, who's a, you know, a, a, a Olympic medalist, uh, uh, he proved that not only that he was tough, that his ground game was good, uh, and constantly looking for, even when he got taken down, he was constantly looking for submission. So, uh, Marlon Mar- 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 wow, you know, what can, what can you say about that kid? Other than that, uh, he's looking amazing, and, um, and he, you know, that fight's going to be a tough fight to watch. But like Ali said, I don't, I don't see any of these fights going the distance from, from opening out to the, uh, to the actual uh, main event. And so we have an amazing uh, under uh, premium card as well. So tune in, NBC Sports Network. And again, thank you so much to the media for all the love and support. Uh, we continue to challenge ourselves. That's our biggest challenge. And uh, thank you again, and um, have a good day, everybody. Okay. Once again, on behalf of uh, World Series of Fighting, thanks to all the fighters, Ray, Ali, and the media for your continued support. We appreciate it, and we look forward to your stories and seeing you on Saturday, March 29th. Thanks again, everyone, and thanks to Maggie and Debbie from the conference group. Have a good afternoon. Goodbye. Oh, yeah.